Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to Manor Lords. So, today's video, the main aim, we want to be getting up to a small town. So really, that entails a few things, but primarily it may, means we need to get these level 3 birdage plots. So to do that, essentially, we need a tavern. Well, we have got uh, barley under production and this is going to be essentially what produces the ale. So that's kind of in hand, although we have still got to actually build the tavern itself. We need a stone church. Well, we have a clay pit and over here and we have the clay furnace. So we are essentially already producing uh, the clay tiles that we're going to actually need to convert this church. We're just not quite there yet. On top of that, we are going to need some form of uh, clothing materials. So that's um, so the shoes, like hoods, cloaks, whatever. So are they going to get that from the sheep? Although, so far, frankly, our two sheep have not provided an enormous amount of wool. So, yeah, we need a little bit more work on that. Or we can try and produce someone who's going to make shoes, turn one of our other Burgess plots into possibly something like a cobbler's workshop. Now, to be honest, we might as well actually perhaps just have a go at that. We've got enough spare families, so let's just commit to that and see uh, how that's going to go. Our plank production has kind of picked up a little bit. We had a, a little bit of a crisis last video where, frankly, I just could not get enough planks because we get uh, the blacksmith producing spears, which uses planks, the joiner's shop making shields, which uses planks, and the fletcher's shop making bows, which also uses planks. And that caused us quite a few issues. But uh, we have now built three saw pits and we're trying to keep up with demand, and that seems to be working a little bit better. I think we might end up having to add on one more person to the logging camp because we're struggling a little bit for uh, because there's so much demand now on the timber. I think we're finally catching up with ourselves a little bit. We're also quite aggressively deforesting the area. We perhaps need to consider uh, uh, doing something about that. <laughs> I think there's actually a replanter somewhere, isn't there? Um, Forester's hut. Worker plants new trees in the specified zone. Yeah, now let's get one of them on the construction queue as well, because I think that would be kind of handy to have. Um, and then we'll try and repopulate this forest. On top of that, I do want to continue to expand this manor house. I was having a bit of a play around with the castle planner. And essentially, we're going to build ourselves a little bit of an outer wall. We will ultimately do some of these sort of garrison towers as well, um, and some of these little outer towers as well. Um, and we've got a tax collector's office, but we need a lot more planks to do that. So we'll have to wait until that builds up a little bit more. Oh, we've actually ran out of space for our market stalls. So we're going to have to build some more of them. Allocate this area over here, getting a little bit into my nominal industrial sector, but I think that's fine. And that should fill in that space there. We can have two little mini markets. Oh no, uh, something's caught fire. What's burnt down? Is that one of my saw pits? How does a saw pit catch fire? Well, that's not exactly ideal. Come on, get the water. Get the fire out. What's just burnt down there? It's my oxen stables. I hope the oxen weren't in it. Ooh, the lamp, incidentally. Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind. Why did just random fires just starting to break out all over the place? Come on, bring that water. The fire has ended. Because the building fell into a complete heap into the ground. Ah. Well, despite the fire, we have already got the small stables rebuilt. And it looks like the saw pit reconstruction is already ongoing. I say, I'm not really sure how a hole in the ground manages to start a fire, but hey ho. So, not only have we got to continue building up the village, but we've also got to consider that actually we've only got 220 days left until we looks like we're going to get basically attacked by raiders. So, I mean, in terms of our military situation currently, we're not looking, I guess, too bad, but we've still not got a full stack of archer militia or spear militia. We've got our retinue, and hopefully we might be able to expand our retinue a bit once we get this sorted, but it's kind of a little bit hard to know. I, I don't really know if we're just missing recruits on this retinue or if it's something else, so that's something we've also got to find out. We could consider trying to upgrade these. We obviously aren't going to get any real armour production we've got basically no iron left in this town but we could try and make some gambesons now essentially we could do this by making cloth and then getting the cloth turned into um, 
and Gamberson's in one of the buildings in one of the, say like the tailor's workshop, workshops. To do that, of course, we need wool. We have only got three sheep. That's, that's one of my concerns with this. We're not exactly abundant on the sheep population. It seems to increase very, very slowly. And I guess in time that will get exponential. But for now, at least, it does kind of seem to be a bit of a problem. So I'm not sure, but we do have a spare family. So maybe we should just crack on and get something that's going to turn the weaver's workshop is probably worth doing. So that's our manor site finished off. Now we've got a little bit of a walled manor. In time we'll upgrade this further because we've got other things like some of these outer towers um, which you can put on for garrison space. You also get a garrison tower. Oh wow, that's sizable, isn't it? Uh, I don't know where we'd actually want to put that. Whether you actually have that on the outer wall or not. I guess that's an option. You can even snap it to the road. Hmm, interesting. So a few options there as well. Yeah, we can actually get it to it snaps to the road, but it also still sits at least within the confines of our little fortified manor house. It does seem slightly somewhat oversized compared to the rest, but sod it. Let's go for it. Set that on the construction queue. There's a few other things to get built first, including our little weaver's workshop. Plus, I could do with getting a couple more of these burgess plots upgraded as well, actually. Although we are slightly short on the old timber front. And we've also got the wooden church still to do as well. Don't forget about that. There's a, a long queue for the builders to be cracking on with. Oh, nice. Our weaver's workshop has just come online. So we'll get that one set up because then at least we can turn what little wool we have. I mean, we only have 11 wool. But we should be able to at least turn it into some yarn, which can then be turned, hopefully, into gambesons. While the builders are busy, busy getting that stuff put down, I'm just going to sneak in an extra field, actually, as we come towards the end of the harvest season, just so we actually have the option... Uh, I, we won't run this as a wheat field next next cycle because let's face it it needs uh, needs a bit of time to recover but we squeeze in another field down here and we'll end up running this one as a wheat field I think we'll probably run that one as a barley field we'll put that on crop rotation for the next year because its fertility is now really quite low and then we'll run it fallow in the third year and then we'll have this barley field change that up to a wheat field so we'll have two wheat fields on one large barley field going to put quite a lot of work on the people here to do but I think ultimately it'll be worth it. So our tailor shop has just come online but it doesn't look good. It looks like we actually need linen not yarn. We could use yarn to make cloaks but we don't actually have any dyes. So, uh, so it looks like we're going to need linen which is going to have to be a different field type yet again I guess. It'd be flax wouldn't it? Uh, what is our flax fertility around here looking like? Can we, do you think the farm can sustain trying to do another field? This might be getting a bit optimistic, maybe, mightn't it? Depends how many people we can manage. I wonder if we can just squeeze in a small... And have that set as flax. So we actually finally have enough stuff to upgrade to a small stone church. Because we've basically got all those roof tiles that we've been producing at our clay furnace. We are basically on the last of our bits of clay now. We've got four clay left. Once that's knocked through, I'm then going to nab this person back off the clay furnace because we are basically at harvest time here in a minute anyway. Four days to go before we harvest our barley and our wheat. And then we have got four fields which we need to try and replow and go on from there. And that's going to take a fair bit of work for us to do. Okay, so I think we are actually now harvesting. So I'm going to nab this guy off this clay furnace. Let's at least get another two people on there. I think our plank situation is improving, so I'm going to nab some back off a saw pit, get him all over the farmhouse. But at least we've got four people now to try and harvest this field, because frankly, there's quite a lot of work to do. Oh, and a new family moved in. Perfect. One more for there as well. And I've just got another ox in from the hitching post, so I'm going to try and force a permanent livestock person to go on to this... Um, uh, farm so then they could use that essentially for ploughing. Yes, everyone's getting everything gathered in now. So we're getting the wheat, we're getting the barley. I suppose we also, along my long list of other things need to build, we, if we upgraded one of these plots to another one, we actually, well, we still need to build the tavern, but on top of that, we need to actually build a brewery extension that produces ale from malt. And I think we get the malt from thrashing the barley, I believe, hopefully. Otherwise, this has all been an absolute colossal waste of time. So, fingers crossed. So, that is all the wheat now in. We got a grand total of only 58 wheat. To be honest, it was quite a poor harvest. I guess this field was just overdone. 
to be honest. Um, so yeah, that's not, not such a good thing, but still we'll rotate it this year and run this as a barley and run this as the wheat field instead. Um, and then we'll have this as a wheat field as well. And then we'll have this for our linen, for our flax. Well, hey, our little small stone church. Is that, it? that looks very cool, doesn't it? I like it, I like it. So that fills another one of our needs now for this. So really all we're now short is actually getting this tavern sorted. I've just been playing around a little bit with some of this farmhouse and the fields. I essentially assigned um, the, the, one of the ox to the farm to try and use it as the plough because that is one of the development points we did in our development tree. Heavy plough as a plough station. Um, the, I just didn't find it really worked very well. As soon as you assigned that, it seemed that one person took the one ox to plough the field but all the other people assigned to the farm basically refused to plough the farm by hand. So in reality, even though that, that may work out more efficient per person, it was a lot less efficient because one person and, a, and the ox is not going to be able to plough these four fields in time for autumn. So it seems better to just to get half the village out and do it all by hand in the end. So hmm, I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I couldn't quite seem to get that one to really work for me. Oh, here we go. Winter is approaching, our second winter. We've got 123 days left until we're going to get attacked by these raiders. Um, the main thing, I just want to make sure we get all these fields dealt with, really. That's that's the main thing I want to get done. It looks like we're going to do it, and then that will give us, obviously, a bulk of spare population, because we can basically take off five people of this and just leave one on there. Looks like the brewing is actually going quite well. We have our malt house and that set up. That is turning the barley to malt, which is just taking that down nicely. We can see the amount of barley going down. And we actually have our little brewery down here as well. And you can see it's taking the malt. I don't know if we've actually yet got any uh, ale. We have two ale. Has it made it to the tavern? There is an ale in the tavern. I don't know if this is enough to technically it is technically enough. Now we could upgrade some of these to a level 3 birdies block. We just need a little bit more regional wealth. Um, so, just going to wait for that to come on in. I suppose we should also think possibly at some point about setting up some uh, trading a little bit more efficiently so we could make more regional wealth that way. But for now, we will get there month to month. So whilst our builders are still busy starting to build more housing down the back around here, we perhaps should be thinking a little bit about trade. I was just having a look at sort of what we've got a lot of and not necessarily so much of. And one thing we seem to have a lot of is well, shoes, essentially. We've got 45 pairs of happen. shoes, which seems perhaps slightly extreme. Now, a lot of this, I guess, is just using up all our leather. In many ways, I'm not a huge fan of that. We don't have vast incomes of leather to be dealing with. And I guess a lot of it is just getting consumed just to make these pairs of shoes. And in some sense, that could end up causing us problems because we actually need to be selling um, uh, leather as a base resource or yarn or linen. We're obviously growing crops for linen, but we don't have it yet. I guess we are starting to get some yarn in theoretically from the wool, but I think that's probably all getting consumed in, in making other things uh, because we can see the wool, but we don't actually have much uh, of spare yarn. But I do have a tailor shop which is producing something from this, is it? No. So where's the yarn going then? Maybe that's just getting brought instead of leather, I guess. Anyway, massive sidetrack is what we really need to do is build a trading post. That's that's where I was going with that. So, trade. Um, we can just sneak one and then down here, I guess. It's the obvious place on the main road. I'd say how big our village is starting to get now. Really kind of cool. In terms of the fields, things are looking pretty good. This is the last main wheat field is just getting sewn up now hopefully that'll be done shortly and then we've always got is this small little flax field at the top get that done as well and then we'll be looking pretty nifty oh okay we actually now have enough to upgrade um so we can actually do our first level three burgess plot we can do is more regional wealth upgrade the settlement level as living space for one it's family blah blah blah, blah. we're gonna use clay tiles which is fine although we haven't actually got necessarily that many of them 43. I suppose that gives us quite a few for the short term. We've just got to bear that in mind. At some point in this game, we do need to expand and find a rich clay deposit to be able to continue expanding up these building homes. Looks like they're going to get quite a lot bigger by the looks of it once you start to do these upgrades. So we'll get that queued up. And there we go. That's pretty well the last field planted. So that's our flax field, uh, two wheat fields and a barley field. 
One thing I'm very marginally concerned about is because our population has expanded kind of quite rapidly, we're at 200 people now. Our food supplies, you know, are not quite what they once were. We don't have the meat squindling pretty rapidly. The berries are almost gone and it's not even winter yet. We're relying a little bit on bread. Now we do still have some grain um, which we can make use of. So we've got that to convert now that this farm is finished. So we can actually strip most of these families off this. Stick someone on the windmill. And another person back on the communal oven as well because they're quite slow without two people there. So that should at least start to produce a little bit of extra bread, which should help us. We also have our first Burgess plot complete. That actually looks really kind of cool. Look at that. And they actually need at least four types of food on the marketplace, is what they're looking for. So I guess they would cause an element of unhappiness without it. But that is looking pretty good. I like it. The blacksmith is looking nice. I love it. Starting to feel more like a town and less like a little village. With our trading post now built, we can think about what we're going to want to do here. So can we actually sell shoes? So we can export them for eight regional wealth. We can also export our large shields, which isn't such a bad thing. We've got a lot of these as well. We can get rid of quite a bit of stuff here. So, so we need a trade route first. Oh, we can trade minor things, but we can't trade... Well, I haven't quite figured out how to set up a trade route yet. I'm probably missing something here, but in the alternative, we can make these wooden parts quite easily um, with our joiner shops. So let's just export some of these. I don't really know what yet they do. If I just keep a desired surplus of five, then at least we get five uh, regional wealth per time when we export this stuff. Oh, I see you actually have to pay to set up a trade route. So I think I've probably figured it out, but... I haven't got any money, so <laughs> we can't actually do it. Good job, Evo. Good job. So as we head into our second winter, the only thing we really need to prepare for now is just this Raiders attack. We've only got 80 days left. We have got reasonably a look at we've almost finished getting enough recruits to completely fill out our spear militia and our archer militia. So, I mean, hopefully never use the archers. Hopefully they're slightly decent. In a dream world, if we could get enough trades, it would be kind of nice to, to import some armor for some of these people, but I don't know if that's realistically gonna happen. So here's an interesting question that I can't quite work out. So if I go back over to this flax field, for example, it's, I guess the crop has failed. I, I, maybe we, because we got it in too late, it didn't get to grow enough before winter set in. Maybe it's died that reason. Because if we look then at the wheat field, it's still a wheat field, the barley field, still barley, blah, 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 and the other wheat field. So why have these three survived, but this one over here seems not to have done? Maybe these three are also going to die shortly, but because they're a bit more established? I wouldn't know. If anyone knows that, I'd really like to know that in the comments. Thank you. Okay, so it looks like a neighbouring region is being claimed. Uh, Goldhof, that's this down here. So we could contest the claim or negotiate. Well, I, I think given that we've got a raid coming soon, and from what I've seen of this guy who had all his mercenaries, I, I, I don't know if we necessarily really want to be contesting that claim. So I think we'll let him do it for now, but that is not necessarily a good thing. The trade here seems really quite slow, so I'm actually going to establish a permanent trade route in wooden parts, just to see if we can start to export them a bit quicker, because we're building up quite a surplus, and the trader seems to only buy like one at a time, so yeah, let's have a go, let's see what happens. Okay, that's sold a little bit more, and that's given us 138 regional wealth. That is a little bit more like it. That is more what I had in mind, as we've shifted, obviously, quite a few wooden parts there. Nice. So, that means I think we could probably open up a trade route for, uh, well, either helmets, or we could have a chain mail trade route, although we're going to spend basically all our money just opening the chain route, never mind really importing them. Maybe that's not such a good thing to do. Let's do that. Establish that trade route, and then we're going to export them, and we'll just keep a surplus of, what, like, 50? With some of the spare money we've left, we've probably now got enough to upgrade the next two Burgess blocks to level 3, and that should actually take us now, once we get these built, to a small town. Fletcher's shop is now to a 3. Right, the joiner's shop is going to be massive!
Hey, there we go. We have become a small town. Oh, that was hard work. But now we've got to decide what we're going to use this for. I found that plough to be honestly pretty rubbish. So we could have bakeries. Produces bed, bread from flour with twice the efficiency. Now when it says efficiency, I wonder if that's speed or the quantities of bread that it makes. I mean, that would be quite handy if that's the case. I mean, the other option is to do something like this. Advanced skinny double the amount of meat harvested by hunters. I think we'll have a go with bakeries. And then is what we can do from then is then take one of our spare... And these are all turning into tier 3 Burgess plots, tailor shops, brewery. This one we've got to upgrade it to level 2 first and then we'll turn this one into our bakery. And then we can scrap the people off the communion oven. But we can take some of the plots and add some things on that I'd like to do. For example, we can have a vegetable garden because this one has got the largest plot, this thing here. So that would be quite nice to have. These ones will probably save for our artisans. I don't know if any of these others can sustain. So we could have maybe like chicken coops, and goat heads, goat sheds. Oh, they provide a passive yield of hides as well, which is kind of cool. So, I mean, we're just putting all these extensions on because I'm slightly worried that one, our food yield is turning entirely to bread. Let's try and sort of domestic to try and make that a bit more varied, get some eggs and hopefully get a couple of vegetables in there as well. So this is now built and this is going to want to be an artisan with twice the efficiency. I don't know if we have any flour left. We do actually have some left. So let's um, scrap that out of the communal oven. And then let's hope that this bakery turns out to be reasonably efficient. Well, it seems like because the Fletcher shop or the, the joiner's shop was not quite big enough, someone had to go one bigger and build an even larger, <laughs> larger building. It's massive. I do feel like we could kind of do with a middle tier of housing between this, though. Like if we find a sort of like level two plot, you get something like this, which is, I'd say, a slightly upgraded hovel. And then you go to these sort of fairly enormous, almost like Tudor-esque medieval buildings. I feel like this could be tier four and there should be almost a, a middle tier. It feels like too much of an upgrade almost. Well, we've got just over 20 days to go, but we have now at least filled our archer militia and our spear militia. We are ready for this raider's attack. Right, here we go. Enemy unit spotted. Let's just see where these are coming from. I've paused. So we've got raiders coming in from... Oh, okay, over there. We've got quite a lot, just a long time to summon then. Yeah, okay, now these people are starting to get a little bit close. I think we're going to summon up the army. I think it's time. I think we'll form everyone outside the castle. Leather, leather. Come on, come on. Sound the alarm. The bells are tonging. Dol tonging? Or even donging. And everyone's going to start to form up. Oh, we've even got a little retinue as well. Oh, they've got like a, like a bill hook or something. That's kind of cool. We've got our archers. I'm curious to see how effective these guys are going to be as well. Oh, and here comes the militia. Oh, he's got a flag. I love it. Flag man. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic. I just love this game. Form up into more of a formation, and let's see what we've got. So we've got this time, obviously, our full stack of fear, spear militia. Obviously, we didn't manage to get any equipment to armor for them. So we've got a little leather helmet, maybe little bits here and there. We really need to work on gammasons for next time around, but looking good. We've then got our archers. You're late. What the hell have you been doing? <laughs> he slipped in. Um, so these, I guess, should just be on auto attack. Accuracy at half the maximum range of work. Right, so when they get close, you can do shoot at will. Okay, good to know. And then, of course, we've got a little retinue here right on the end. So these guys should be a little bit better equipped. Yeah, we've got a little bit of chain mail. So much better armor, although sadly, there is only five of them. Right, so, given this situation, how far off are these brigands? Do we go to them or do we wait for them to come to us? Right, we're going to move up north like, to try and intercept, intercept these bandits as they come. I actually want this fight now. I'm ready for this. I want to see what my archers can do more than anything. 
up this flag. Man fighting a dragon. <laughs> this is definitely a moment for some cinematic shots. Okay, here's some outlaws moving out here now. Hopefully they're not going to go straight to my archers. The archers are loosing. Move the... Quickly, 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 quickly. Run to position. Take the archers. Although actually, with the archers are doing a really good job beforehand. Okay, Spear Militia is in place to defend the archers. Good, good job, good job, good job. Let's intercept these brigands coming in now. I think our retinue is going to have a bit of a hard time dealing with this on their own, but it looks like we're going to deal with these um, brigands as they're almost breaking anyway. Let's get these on the push forwards aggressive command. Go on, break them, break them. Go for the other ones. Come on, Spear Militia. Onwards, onwards, onwards. Defend the retinue. I'm slightly worried about friendly fire from these archers. Looks good. They're going to break their morale. is almost gone. Nice job. Okay, we have broken the bandits. That went absolutely perfectly. We basically took no casualties. The archers actually did really well. The bandits make a run for it. <laughs> the archers did really well. I'm honestly really pleased with them. Managed to get our spear militia out in front in time to at least to defend them, which is nice as well. So, I guess we can fully dismiss everyone. Let's disband everyone down. Good job, army. You may all return home. Well, that has been a lot of fun. I do like the combat mechanics in this game. And I think next time we might even think about sort of challenging maybe for some more of the territory rather than just letting it get claimed. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll see you guys all on the next one.